uh, today we are here uh, as the Cosmos, the Space Agency of Azerbaijan, as well as a host organization of upcoming IAC 2023 Baku Congress. We are delighted to uh, see you, all of you here at our session. Today we have a nice and in so much interesting uh, theme that's related space activities, uh, especially benefits of socioeconomic development of uh, space industry in emerging countries. So today we are uh, not alone here, as well as uh, with our, my colleagues from other cosmos. We have a partner colleague as well from Italy Space Agency. Nice to see you, Mr. Danilo. Uh, yes, right now we ha uh, are started about talking about, <clears throat> firstly about our uh, Azerbaijan and uh, other cosmos as well, and our space uh, industry. Yes, well, firstly we start our chairman, vice chairman, uh, Dunay Badrkhanov. Uh, yeah, can you talk about the space industry history, space industry uh, activities in Azerbaijan? Of course. Uh uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's nice to see everyone in uh, today in our meeting uh, where we uh, will introduce our space agency, uh, which is establishing space agency. And the uh, modern space activities uh, in Azerbaijan started uh, just recently, uh, about uh, 11 years ago, when uh, uh, the government of Azerbaijan established the uh, satellite operator to provide satellite services. So uh, we launched uh, two satellites uh, to geostationary orbit to provide telecommunications services uh, in uh, Europe, uh, Central Asia, uh, Africa, and Middle East. And uh, so this is uh, uh, started as a pure uh, business activity, but of course it impacted uh, the overall uh, industry in Azerbaijan, in the region and the world. Uh, as we today uh, provide uh, the satellite uh, services in more than uh, 45 countries uh, and more than and close to 200 uh, customers, which are both uh, government and private sectors in uh, in the uh, Eastern Hemisphere. Uh, the importance uh, of the uh, business activities in space for Azerbaijan has started as a way of diversification of our economy, uh, which uh, a long time ago was uh, mostly focused on the uh, oil and gas industry, uh, uh, committing the uh, energy uh, 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 security uh, in Europe, and uh, but after as diversif diversifying it, uh, we started to move in different directions, which were uh, the uh, tourism, uh, agriculture, and space, as well as, as well as human capital. And of course, in order to move in any direction, you you need people to move together. And we saw these challenges when we just started to build a satellite operator. We worked with our international friends uh, from uh, uh, Europe, Asia, and overseas from all continents to build uh, this uh, uh, capabilities, capacity to, pro uh, to operate the satellites in orbit and uh, to provide the services. Uh, we built uh, two beautiful ground stations uh, in Azerbaijan uh, and also uh, we collaborated with our partners uh, around the world uh, to make sure that uh, whatever we provide, we provide it with quality. And uh, as a result, of course, and later, of course, uh, as a uh, launch of the Earth Observation Satellite, it further expanded our activities to provide the uh, imagery data and uh, geographical information system services. And uh, by that way, uh, contributing to overall uh, socioeconomic uh, uh, development of the country. Uh, so 
th this is a very interesting case is when you start with a pure commercial activity and at the end uh, the, all, uh, the whole nation uh, have use of it. Uh, we provided uh, sovereign uh, uh, connectivity uh, in Azerbaijan and uh, in the region as a, f a first satellite operator in the South Caucasus. And uh, the also uh, the Earth observation services, we started as a just a data provider from satellite together with our uh, partners uh, working in constellation with the uh, uh, very high quality uh, data, space data. But uh, further, uh, uh, we developed a space program to use this imagery data, and it was complete success as the uh, uh, now all the different uh, government entities and the private uh, uh, companies started to use this uh, data to Im improve their uh, work, uh, their activities. And uh, today we are expanding our uh, imagery services with bringing new uh, uh, data applications in our geographic information systems center. And besides, uh, now we have more need uh, from the local industry for the people who can actually perform these activities. And as a result, uh, working with the local uh, uh, academia, the National Aviation Academy, we uh, just recently uh, uh, opened a, a training center for uh, GIS. And uh, in few, uh, this is international certified uh, training center where in future we plan to uh, bring uh, not only local specialists but all the specialists from the uh, our region. Yes. Thank you, Dina. You mentioned lots of things uh, regarding space agency uh, activities of Azerbaijan and right now that uh, as a host organization and Azerbaijan is preparing to host a premier and magnificent event, IAC 2023. What are the expectations for 2023 IAC? Uh, so, uh, the interesting thing about IAC in Baku is that uh, it was first happened right uh, 50 years before in 1973 in Baku, uh, bringing more than uh, 1,500 people uh, uh, from uh, different uh, uh, parts of the uh, world and all the continents. And uh, actually this was uh, a large contribution to the development of the first space activities in Azerbaijan, as after that we started to build uh, some uh, space systems and launch them uh, on board of uh, different uh, uh, space stations uh, like Salut and Mir. Uh, but the modern uh, uh, Baku, now is waiting to uh, host the uh, new IAC, the more modern IAC, which is uh, uh, the main aim is the uh, bridging the gap between the uh, uh, developed, uh, established, and emerging uh, space nations. And as uh, if you look at the map of uh, IAEF, you may see that uh, we are like in the middle of. Uh, no activity. <laughs> so it means that uh, IAC in Baku generally uh, is a chance for the regional uh, countries to get involved to the, uh, all the activities of the International Ast Astronautical Federation and uh, the all over the space community building network. And this brings actually new opportunities for the space industry and uh, of course for the space education. Mm. Baku uh, has already a large uh, experience in international events uh, because uh, it has a, a very well established tourism thanks to its uh, uh, unique uh, nature and history which starts uh, as a uh, capital uh, from 12th century. So you, you have very diverse uh, architecture, culture, and uh, diverse in all the ways, uh, language, uh, religion, uh, in any way it's interesting 
uh, to visit Baku uh, to see how different cultures are living uh, together in peace. And this is uh, w w uh, what is our uh, main force. So we are successful in international events. A lot of people of, uh, from sport world uh, already know Baku as we have uh, uh, first inaugural European Games, Islamic Games, and annual uh, Formula One races in Baku. So now uh, it's time uh, for modern uh, science and uh, space industry to know more about Baku. And here you can see some uh, uh, pictures uh, of the uh, place we are, we, we are going to host uh, the uh, event. And this is the uh, Baku Convention Complex, uh, consisting of, of uh, two very beautiful modern buildings uh, with uh, good, uh, 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 you know, uh, with, all, with all the functions you, you, you need to have for the uh, good International Astronomical Congress. So this is Baku Convention Center and Harda Aliyev Center. And so... Yesterday, uh, as you mentioned, that uh, we have uh, very magnificent uh, places to host our space community in Baku. And um, thank you for uh, reaching the, this message to uh, all of people, and uh, not only here, uh, as well as the, during the uh, five days of Paris event. So uh, moving along to my uh, colleague Lala, Lala Hassanzada. Yes, she will introduce herself and she will talk about the business opportunities in space industry. Yes, Lala. Thank you, Fidan. Thank you. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you for coming. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our uh, services, what we are doing, and about our current projects that we are working on. So uh, as uh, my colleague Dunai mentioned that, yeah, we operate three satellites in our fleet. So we have two telecommunication satellites and one Earth observation satellite. So uh, we also have our uh, ground, uh, main ground control station. So, uh, and uh, one of the biggest accomplishments that we have uh, is that this ground station has tier four certificate from the organization, which is the World Teleport Association. And the tier four provides the 100 percentage of reliability and uh, uh, service at the highest level that we can provide and we provide to the customers and our current partners. So uh, you can see the, the, the picture of our uh, antennas that we have. Uh, our, hosting, uh, our ground station basically provides the hosting services for different partners uh, to the organizations. So uh, we are um, extremely involved in this type of activities. And I would like to highlight that uh, we have several partners from uh, America, uh, from uh, Europe. Uh, from Europe, I can mention that uh, it, uh, Italy. So we recently uh, established the antenna for uh, leaf space. Uh, this is the uh, 3.7 meter S6 band antenna for the leaf space company. And we also have partners uh, from Spain, which is the Oasis Networks company, uh, and the partners from China, uh, in Posad. Uh, uh, there is a 4.2 meter antenna uh, installed at our ground station. So basically, our ground station uh, has the best, uh, uh, let's say, uh, experience in providing the services for geo antennas, uh, TTC antennas, uh, GNSS antennas. And we are extremely involved in looking for new opportunities uh, because the market is growing. And for that, we are also uh, keen to improve our ground station in terms of the uh, optical to improve, uh, let's say, uh, laser communications and uh, to install the optical uh, network at our ground station. Uh, so, um, the, our ground station also locates in the uh, location that is, uh, connects like Europe and Middle East. So, this is the great location that we can offer and we do offer to our partners and clients uh, in terms of the uh, geographical position. So you can see that uh, the coordinates of our ground station uh, that, uh, that is mentioned. Uh, and uh, yes, we are uh, contributing to the services and uh, offer our um, let's say, uh, hosting, hosting services. 
Uh, another direction that we are extremely involving in is the direct receiving station. So uh, we have 5.5 meter uh, uh, direct receiving uh, station. This is the antenna, 5.5 meter antenna. And thanks to this uh, antenna, uh, we provide uh, services to global satellite operators, which do not have their own ground station, but can connect to the LEO satellites uh, and um, basically downlink the data and uh, instantly process it and present the end result and end product to its customers. So uh, we have agreement with the uh, Japanese uh, startup company, which is InfoStellar, and with other partners. We are also uh, diving in this activity and we are evolving this opportunity. So this is the fully motion 5.5 uh, meter antenna. Uh, another uh, uh, other services that we are uh, working on are the satellite services. So the satellite services, uh, or we call the managed services, those are the services that we provide to the uh, newly established uh, satellite operators, uh, startup companies uh, that do not have enough experience in uh, satellite operation. Uh, but uh, our company, which as we have more than 10 years experience in uh, satellite operator, as we are also a satellite operator and we have experience in uh, network operation services, satellite operation services, and we offer package uh, training consultancy to the companies that are newly in this uh, business and in this industry. So uh, that's it from my side. Uh, Thank you, Lala. You uh, mentioned lots of things about the uh, space industry market, uh, what we have done, what we do, and what about the planning for future? Uh, thank you. So for the future, we are extremely involving in the, uh, uh, let's say, GNSS sector. So we have uh, some uh, big, huge projects with the uh, USPA, and uh, this is going to be a big contribution to our ground station and for our region. And another activity that we are uh, evolving on, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, is the optical ground station. Uh, this is the new market, and we are investigating this opportunity, uh, and we are keen to uh, improve our station in terms of the optical uh, network. Thank you, Lala. As you mentioned that space is, uh, has no limitation. Right, so, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and the space industry is rapidly evolving and uh, we try to catch these opportunities as well as. Thank you, Lala. Thank you. Uh, yes, next hour about um, so critical <laughs> and too much political things. <laughs> Not only political, of course, I'm uh, kidding, just about it. We are talking about the strategical movement, uh, strategical acting uh, about uh, in Azerbaijan uh, the related uh, space industry. Yes, Natavan, uh, as well as you have, if I'm not mistaken, you have a, a session regarding our uh, educational programs. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. First, let's start, uh, before starting yeah. educational programs, we can start our strategical things. Yes, sure. Activities. Thank you, yes. Fidan. And I also would like to say uh, hello everybody uh, at this session. So on this final day of the IAC, um, I would like to talk about uh, strategic development direction at Other Cosmos. Uh, my colleagues have already mentioned that we started as satellite operator back then in 2010. And uh, last year, uh, we uh, obtained it a space agency function and it created new challenges uh, in front of Other Cosmos. So from the strategic development point of view, uh, we started to develop national space strategy uh, for Azerbaijan. And uh, this uh, document is in uh, alignment with uh, Azerbaijan 2013 national priorities for socioeconomic development. So there are uh, five uh, priorities and one of them is the human uh, capital development, socioeconomic development and other uh, spheres. So uh, we also of course consider uh, whatever happens uh, globally and uh, for uh, in that regard uh, we are uh, aiming to achieve UN sustainable development goals in Azerbaijan as well or to make contribution to uh, achieve uh, these uh, development goals. Uh, another one is also the charter of the space agency of the Republic of Azerbaijan. So uh, when Azer Cosmos started its activities in Azerbaijan, there was uh, five main uh, directions uh, to do activities. Uh, first of all is the protection of national interests. Uh, we see that how um, 
uh, space uh, plays critical role in terms of protecting national interests. So it comes to information uh, security in terms of we have our own uh, satellites on orbit and we provide, um, uh, we are broadcasting our national TV and radio channels on our satellites. And also, of course, we are uh, protecting our environment in terms of uh, observer observation activities. So we are providing solutions uh, to uh, agriculture, ecology, and we are even um, developing um, a model uh, on uh, climate change, how to fight climate change uh, through the space. So the another one is expanding and strengthening international cooperation. We understand that for emerging space countries, it's critical to have uh, international collaboration with the major players and all the other regional players. Uh, so in this regard, uh, we can I can say uh, one uh, thing that uh, the, we have pretty good uh, relations uh, with uh, different countries. It is overall more than 40 countries. And uh, in this uh, regard, we are also very active in some uh, organizations, including uh, the Federationists of IEF. And thanks to this uh, uh, strengthening international cooperation, uh, we achieved uh, to uh, host, uh, hopefully next year, yeah, we will achieve uh, to host the uh, next IEC in Baku after 50 years again in Baku, Azerbaijan. So the third direction is research and development. In this regard, uh, we are developing and we are aiming to develop uh, CubeSat in Azerbaijan. So uh, it's uh, at a very early stage of the development, uh, but uh, it will help us uh, uh, to also uh, position uh, other cosmos uh, in terms of uh, manufacturing and uh, satellite development. And socioeconomic, when it comes to socioeconomic development, uh, we can say that uh, we create a space economy in Azerbaijan. Uh, we are, uh, 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 our revenues are being generated outside of Azerbaijan, it's about 90%. And uh, it helps us also to make contribution to different uh, areas of the economies. So it's also apl applicable for sustainable financial goals. Uh, so, uh, as a next, I would like uh, also uh, to speak about uh, space ecosystem initiatives. For the next years to come, uh, one of the directions we want to achieve is the build of national space ecosystem and also uh, to do some outreach programs and uh, to strengthen our position in that sense. Because now it is, the, uh, it is our role uh, to achieve uh, human capital development in Azerbaijan. And in this regard, uh, we are uh, looking uh, for different projects, collaboration with international players, how we can uh, do it uh, as a quick wins. Uh, so uh, for the uh, improving space governance and regulatory framework perspective, I would like to mention that uh, we are at the final stage of development uh, space law, and it's gonna be hopefully uh, adopted at the on end of this year. And it's going to be one of its first kind uh, document uh, to be developed in uh, Azerbaijan. So uh, when it comes to science uh, education and some educational outreach programs, you see the photos from the uh, Techno Fest and other uh, competitions. Uh, so I would like to give brief information that's more uh, than... 500 students from uh, 15 universities uh, participated at CANSAT uh, project, CANSAT development competition. And also we have organized some uh, space, NASA space apps, hackathons, and et cetera. And uh, also uh, I would like to mention that uh, for the years to come, we will be more focusing on uh, doing educational programs because we see that the jobs that will be created in the future, they come, 90% of them, uh, are related to STEM fields. And uh, as a workforce diversity, we are also uh, very, um, we are paying uh, more attention to this uh, sector as well. So uh, we, the, according to the statistics provided by the UNOSA, we know that uh, the women's participation at the aerospace industry fluctuating around 20 years for last uh, 30 years, uh, around uh, 20%. Uh, so uh, it's somehow similar to uh, the figures we have at Azure Cosmos, but nevertheless, we are focused on to make it more diverse and to have more female engineers and leaders uh, different departments that you see uh, from the presentation. 
So overall, it's the uh, direction we want to follow, and uh, we believe that it will help us to position as a cosmos, a uh, very uh, strong uh, space country in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Natavan, uh, for your interesting uh, points that you have uh, highlighted. But one question, as a strategist, uh, how do you see the associated partners at, uh, within the IAC, IAF uh, that, uh, yes. events? Uh, before the IAC, specifically next year in Baku, uh, we are uh, already in active discussion with the International Players Association to do something together uh, um, in terms of outreach programs or uh, competitions or innovation start startups. And uh, we believe it will uh, create a very good platform for those uh, to meet together and uh, to raise awareness specifically in this region. Thank you, Natavan. Thank you for uh, covering and embrace uh, lots of things uh, during our session. Uh, now, moving along to our uh, dear colleague from uh, Italy Space Agency. Uh, thank you, firstly, for accepting uh, our invitation to participate at our panel discussions. Uh, so, uh, I would like to introduce uh, you by my, myself. Firstly, I guess. Uh, Mr. Danilo is uh, Head of International Affairs and Space Dipl Diplomacy Unit at uh, Italian Space Agency. He talks lots of things. Yes, let's start. First of all, <coughs> good afternoon to, to all of you. Thank you for your invitation. It's really a pleasure to be here. So the talk we were uh, invited to is uh, um, uh, to try to discuss and understand how we can support socioeconomic challenges um, in our countries and uh, both in emerging countries as a way to um, support the growth of uh, uh, space frameworks. So I have to start saying that in Italy we have a rather jeopardized uh, development. So geographically we have areas in which we would like to support growth and in every area we have uh, the need of technology development uh, and uh, to enhance this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, knowledge-based uh, uh, growth uh, related to space. This is why in the years we have developed many tools and approaches in order to listen what is needed and to analyze what can be done through space. <coughs> This is why here I have listed some of the approaches that we use and that are rather common, but it's important to say that a mix of all of them are very important. So, for instance, we have the exchange of services, just as an example, if we can go back with the slide. Thank you. As an example, uh, with Argentina, we exchange uh, rather of different bands. We have the X band and they have the C band and the mix of the two Im images can help understanding better what we are observing. At the same, uh, on a different line, we have the possibility of uh, um, uh, collaborating in technology developments and supporting technology developments. Those are tools, those are approaches that can be made at lower TRLs, at higher TRLs. It, they can be made on a complementary approach or on a coordinated approach. And uh, for instance, in this case, we have uh, we are developing a nanosatellite program that is called Alcor, and uh, it was born as a, a professional approach in developing nanosatellites, but we realized that uh, little by little, or better, <laughs> rather faster, uh, it has become a, a space diplomacy tool. So we are cooperating uh, with many countries in uh, trying to understand uh, what is needed for them and for us, and starting with these kind of projects that are based on not very expensive projects but with very high level of technologies and we develop them together. 
So we have the approaches focused on SDGs, the famous SDGs. Let's say that we started in a reverse approach. <laughs> so at the beginning, we, we had projects and we tried to uh, indicate for those projects what were the impacted SDGs. But during times, we have started projects that are directly focused on specific SDGs. We can have a collaboration on specific applications uh, this means knowing each other and understanding what is needed for uh, for us, for our country, for your country. But uh, we make it even with uh, uh, our territories. And uh, so trying to uh, understand who's the, um, where is the class of citizen and uh, what are the needs that they have to develop specific applications focused on uh, societal needs. So this is, uh, this is brought during the years on a, uh, broad class of approaches that we have been developing and uh, um, in every relation, in every approach of this kind, uh, one of the steps uh, that are fundamental are to talk together, to clarify, to understand each other and to, to evaluate. We, uh, on, on, a national, um, on the national side, uh, we have to say that we have uh, even uh, also many uh, socioeconomic studies. Socioeconomic studies allow to um, determine what are the pillars in depicting the impacts of uh, uh, space uh, in our activities, in our society. And so we go from macroeconomic study and microeconomic studies, and all of them allow to understand and to better focus what will be the next steps and what could be a roadmap in uh, growing and also in collaborating. But today I would like to focus on two approaches uh, of this list that are capacity building and international events. So <clears throat> for us, capacity building in, is promoting and creating premises and conditions for an, an autonomous and sustainable development, able to establish and manage capabilities and challenges. We bring this uh, approach uh, as uh, a case study because we have some examples to provide. So if we move to the next slide, we can see that one of the um, collaboration, the long lasting collaboration that we have uh, is with Kenya. And uh, since uh, 1964, we have been collaborating with the national government of Kenya with a base that we have uh, uh, located uh, in Malindi. And initially it was a uh, launching base. So we were the third country in the world launching uh, uh, civilian satellite, a civilian satellite after Russia and uh, US. And uh, so from that base we launched something like 27 satellites with 100% success. <laughs> and uh, now this, that is a uh, um, uh, very important center for us uh, and uh, during the years it is uh, 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 we have experienced uh, many different classes of collaborations so we have collaborated uh, first of all we have 180 Kenyan colleagues that are working there in this in this base we have uh, um, located there uh, clearly our antennas because it is no more a launching base and uh, the approach with the, uh, the country is, uh, has been that of defining training courses and capa capability building approaches of different classes. For instance, here we have the young pro uh, postgraduate course on space mission design and management that has been uh, uh, realized. It's one of the last uh, uh, examples before the pandemics, and it has been realized, if I'm not wrong, in 2017. Then we had the collaboration uh, on the definition of a nanosatellite programs, that is ICONS, and uh, Wankunz is the first satellite that has been uh, uh, launched in 2019. Then we have a second satellite, nanosatellite, that has been sent in 2000. Uh, 21, that is Simba. And this is the approach that we have con with Kenya that uh, has allowed us to create even uh, um, an example that is followed by other countries of the region. But uh, 
uh, even more we can uh, um, clarify this approach with the next slide where we would like to focus on the, the collaboration that Italy has since many years with uh, Argentina and uh, in, particular, uh, in particular with uh, the um, uh, National uh, uh, Space Agency of Argentina, the DISCONE. Uh, we developed uh, together with Argentina, uh, Argentinian colleagues uh, uh, a system called CIASG, that is uh, the Italian Argentinian satellite system dedicated to emergency and uh, disaster management. It's based on two constellations, two different constellations of Earth observation, both on radar. Uh, as I said before, uh, they are related to different uh, frequencies, and so one is radar on X-band and the other one it's on C-band. And this has allowed us to, first of all, introduce uh, um, uh, uh, continuous collaborations on technologies, but also on capacity building building training courses and uh, uh, there has been uh, another very important collaboration with uh, uh, Instituto Maria Gulic that is uh, um, an Argentinian center that is based on uh, space studies and we are we are developing training courses and continuous and recurring approaches uh, in uh, uh, formation training and uh, um, let's say design uh, of uh, um, small missions and uh, nano satellites, and uh, as we, um, as you can see, we have organized uh, uh, also through the Mario Gulic Center uh, uh, a master course in space application for early warning and response to emergencies, based on various uh, uh, topics that are typical of uh, emergency and disaster management. This can be considered as an example for the region development because it's uh, becoming, uh, it's attracting always more um, uh, expert, experts, uh, people that would like to grow on the space field from all the whole region. Yes, and uh, the approach is that they are all welcome, and so uh, uh, it's a very interesting example. Last but not least, I would like to <coughs> talk about the um, International Space Forum and in general of international uh, uh, collaboration and events. Here we can recall just now the next uh, IAC that have been organized uh, and that we are going to have in uh, Baku next year. So uh, I take the occasion to uh, congratulate with you uh, on the organization of the event. I see uh, lots of things that are uh, going to be organized and so I uh, uh, um, have a great desire to come and participate and invite clearly uh, all the, the, the colleagues. Um, and uh, uh, my example that I bring here is that uh, of uh, the Italian collaboration, the ASI collaboration with the IAF in organizing this uh, particular event that is uh, part of the uh, family of uh, uh, IAF events, <coughs> that is the International Space Forum. It's an initiative at ministerial level that was launched in 2015 with the first example in Trento and uh, it's focused uh, on uh, particular regions. So we call them uh, uh, those events chapters and uh, uh, from every chapter we uh, extract a page and this page is uh, the list of points and uh, agreed elements that uh, we extract from those two days of uh, meeting. So we have had uh, uh, a chapter uh, called the African chapter in, uh, uh, that we held in Nairobi in Kenya in 2017. In 2018 we had Latin American and Caribbean chapter in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and so on. And we should have had uh, the Malaysian one in 2020, but it was blocked because of the pandemic, and we are organizing it, and so we will have it probably in 2023, uh, two chapters of the ISF that will be in Southern East Asia region uh, and in Malaysia, in Malaysia, and the other one will be in Central America and Caribbean regions. So these are just examples. The title and the subject that we decided to discuss about would have, could, uh, could take hours. So uh, this is my... Uh, um, a uh, little contribute uh, in uh, this argument. So I thank you a lot. Thank you, Mr. Danilo, for your uh, 
very interesting and very beneficial information about regarding the uh, international relations and cooperation. As you mentioned, that it's a pillar of the space activities, international strengths and international cooperation, and uh, for humanity, for socioeconomic development of the people. Okay, thank you. Thank you for interesting moments. Thank you. Now, <coughs> we have finalized our session, but uh, our uh, b before uh, the closing our session, and uh, I would like to give uh, a word to my colleague Dunai, and he has some words about the IAC Baku. So uh, I know we are out of time, so I'll be very short. Uh, we are looking forward to welcome you in Baku, uh, and uh, and enjoy our beautiful city, and uh, followed by the. Uh, also not least beautiful Milano in 2024. So I think the uh, next years are going to be really interesting in terms of visiting IAC. So looking forward to see all of you there. Thank you. Thank you, Dunai. Thank you all of you that uh, because of here and uh, at the end, uh, we would like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank the uh, International Astronautical Federation and uh, CNES for organizing a magnificent and a beautiful event here in Paris. And thank you uh, for uh, giving a chance uh, to uh, organize this session with our colleagues here. And uh, of course, we convey uh, our warm regards and our warm gratitude from Azerbaijan to all of you. And we are waiting, looking forward, uh, looking forward to you in Baku next year. And we can say that, yes, we are back to Baku after a half century. Thank you.